The final example of a strategy for, uh, for gaining control is Han Fei, sometimes called a legalist. Han Fei began as a student of Shunzi, like the Confucian philosopher Shunzi, and quits it and turns instead to a very different proposition. Rather than relying on rituals, why not rely on laws? But he's also interested by the relativism of the Taoists and writes a commentary, in fact, on Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching. He says, well, you know, if, if you can get people to act like you want them to act by using rewards and punishments, because people are basically self-interested, and the ruler wants to s secure his state, then what he needs to do is decide what he wants and reward people for doing it and punish them for not doing it. And since everything is relative and since people are self-interested, you basically will be able to control society with the two handles of reward and punishment. Now, he says, this seems like it's a very simple thing. It's obvious. It's true. You would think that every ruler in the world who wanted to be successful and conquer all the other states would follow this rule. How come they don't? So the problem is this, is people really are very self-interested, and that goes for rulers too. They think the point of having so much power is that it can indulge themselves and follow their own desires. And the minute they start to indulge themselves, their underlings, their officials will start to see, aha, uh -huh, now I could get ahead at court, not by doing a good job, but by making my, my ruler like me. I could appeal to things he wants. I could flatter him. I could provide him with things that he desires. And I wouldn't have to do anything except provide those things. And I could do what I wanted. That's true, says, uh, says Han Fei. And you, as a result, will lose your state because your officials will not be doing their jobs. So what are you to do? You, as a ruler, you must never reveal Never reveal, and here we can see some of the Taoist influence as well. Never reveal what you want. In fact, you should not w want anything except the perpetuation of your state. And if you perpetuate your state, you must get your officials to be competent. And how are you going to do that? You do not propose what they should do. You invite them to come to you and say what the problem is and what solution they have in mind. And then you say, go and solve it. And if they succeed, you reward them. And if they fail, you punish them. And that's the way you keep your officials being efficient. In fact, this, this view um, took hold in early China. And it became common that, if, for example, generals who took their troops into battle and failed would then be brought to the law courts afterward and punished for having failed in battle. Officials need to see that their only hope for advancement in government is by being competent by making the state stronger. And if they can do that, then they will be successful and the state will be successful. But the ruler has to pay a price. The ruler must become, in some sense, invisible. He can have no desires. He must lead a very frugal and simple life. He must make sure that the law is obeyed absolutely. Han Fei begins as somebody who says, this is how you as ruler can become the strongest ruler. In fact, what he's done, I think, is he's pinned the ruler down and limited his options. He said, you, in fact, must subordinate yourself to the interests of the state if you are to be successful. You can't have a life of your own. So paradoxically, the person who believes the most in rewards and punishment ends up fencing in, constraining the ruler in a way that's quite unexpected.